Hello everyone, welcome on Lost Seek Unlocked powered by Traco. Today our guest is Sasang Jain. He is director of Loaded, a young logistic company which is doing great job in industry and they are also one of our previous client. Let's have a conversation and see what he think about the Intel logistic and how he is moving forward with his thoughts. So hello everyone. Today we have Sasang, who is director of uh, Loadit. So let's start. So welcome, Sasang. So hi, Pratik. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? All good. All good. Thanks a lot for having me here today. I have yeah. been seeing so, your post of uh, on LinkedIn and what you are doing for the industry and the kind of data that you have been sharing is phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we will start this logistic unlock with your, you know, way of working, what you're doing, what loaded doing in industry and how things are going on. Okay. So, uh, so primarily see we, uh, at loaded have, so we recently pivoted and, uh, launched this around two, two and a half years back where our prime focus to start with was to go forward and provide a solution with for brands, whether who are existingly offline and want to start selling online or those D2C brands who are, you know, in a hardcore manner, uh, selling primarily on online space. Uh, the reason for it was because see in, in the logistics industry, there is a lot of lack of data that prevail and all the e-com industries, whether we talk about Flipkart, Reliance, Amazon, and many more work on appointment based module where there are a lot of rejections that happen on time of delivery. So a uh, lot of customers face difficulty in tracking how much shipment was delivered, how much was rejected, when it was delivered and so forth. So we uh, ideally entered into the market with the focus on these brands, helping them and assisting them in better deliveries uh, in their e-com platforms. So that was the idea that we started with. Wow, nice, nice. So here are the things comes in, you know, entire Indian logistic was model focus on cost effective, right? So how you are changing, like how you are doing the shift from cost centric logistic to value centric logistics. Okay. So, uh, so if we talk about the change that has happened, whether it is from, so when, when I answer this question, it would primarily from focus of companies who are doing whose top line is more than hundred crore currently, whether they are doing e-commerce or non-e-commerce. Right. So earlier, what used to happen, say five years down the line is everyone used to work on an omni channel module, wherein they will have 20, 30 vendors servicing across countries in different, different parts. Right. So if I have a query for Bombay, I have a different vendor. If I have a query for Pune, I have a different vendor and so forth. Now this was ideally done to reduce the cost of logistics or transportation for them. Right. But at the same time, it was adding on to a lot of hassle of managing GST, well, managing the input side of it, right? Overall, a single, if say, for example, in a hundred crore company, you have two or three people handling logistics, they are interacting with 30 people on a given day. So there has been a shift that we see now where all these companies want to go with either single window or dual window solution, where they want either one logistics player or two logistics player, which is an L1, L2, or maybe an L3, depending on the volume to service them. Right. And this is happening not at MNC level because that was there prevalent there uh, as it is. It is happening now at those companies which are doing 100 crore, 150 crore plus top line. Right. And that's what our focus is. So what we pitch in ourselves as that we would be a single point of contact for you managing your entire logistics, managing your entire dispatch. That's true that it adds on to a two or three percent cost for the client, but the value add that he is getting is phenomenal. And all these companies, when I talk about, are also seeing second generation or third generation entrepreneurs joining them in. Hence, their mindset is very clear. They want data visibility. They want to see their entire supply chain, whether it is inward coming in or outward going in, what is there, where is it, and on top, on tip of their fingers. So our focus has been in developing those modules, helping them in giving better capability where we are obviously using Traco as well as one of our partners to assist them. So, uh, and I think this is, this is now going to, uh, perfiltrate lower and lower where you will see small SMEs, MSMEs also going forward with these modules. Yeah. Right. So, so I just wanted to, uh, ask one more thing in this, right? So when you talk about the visibility in between companies who are giving loads and in between the transporter who are transforming the loads to some other reasons, right? So India is such a country where we see so many things happening under the table, right? So how you are making sure or how you can suggest someone to make sure that this visibility can be increased and how they can, you know, uh, how they can do the entire transaction more transparent way. So uh, I would answer this in two ways, right? The first one, as you mentioned, is when 
the business owner or the management has to have a clarity whether this logistic partner is giving me the best value service or not, or is there a ch- cheaper solution available, right? That's where we see this flurry of RFQs coming in, which was done by MNCs now, but are now being done by smaller companies as well, which are using different, different platforms, which have come in terms of reverse bidding, in terms of yearly bidding and so forth, right? So that helps in solving the first part of it, where they get an assurance that yes, there are around 40 people or 30 people or 50 odd people who participated, and these people are giving me services, right? So that takes care of the first part, whether the cost effectiveness is there or not. Coming to the second part of it, right, is the main MIS that we talk about, wherein for an industry or for a factory, how does he get the visibility, right? So now one is GPS, right? So GPS will be with the fleet owner. But right. to be very real, anyone who takes a contract logistics, he utilizes maybe 20 or 30% of his own fleet, but 70, 80% is a market procure fleet. There comes in a role for your SIM trackings, your uh, GPS modules, which can be integrated at loading point itself, which offers them a better solution. Second, forever, transporters have had a fear of not telling if something is going wrong to the manufacturer. But why? See, everyone is educated now. Everyone knows that driver is an issue, right? That there is a human element present and that human element which is servicing it is, is not a graduate. Right, most of them not are not even have done the school completely, right? So why? So why is there a fear of telling a client hey, this is the issue I am facing? Right? So that's what we come we come here, right? We now when we have any issue where we are facing driver-related problem or any issue, we escalate it to the client immediately up front that this is the problem happening. We are highlighting you this and we are resolving on this. And right. he knows it because he has the SIM tracking, he has the GPS tracking that goes with the MIS every day where he can track whether, yes, I am telling right or not, whether the data is matching to what I'm communicating or not, right? So there has been this shift that we see and it is moving too fast. Everyone is now asking when you go and pitch yourself as a company, the first question comes in this only. Do you have GPS installed? Do you have have any tracking mechanism? If yes, what is it? Show us that. So before even asking me what the cost is, he wants to know what the technology solution I'm providing him. Yeah, yeah. And while talking to so many clients, you know, this is what is changing in industry. And more or less, manufacturing companies are also open to help transporter if they are facing any issue in transit, you know. And this is what is happening. Okay, so Absolutely. I would also like to, uh, uh, you know, know your point on the new age lossy companies which are coming in, right? We can see there are so many traditional companies are there in industry. They are doing business from maybe 20, 30, 40 years uh, but there are in recent few years, in recent five, four years, there's so many new age companies are coming and they are doing different work. They are becoming unicorn. They are doing good numbers. They are working with good partners and people are giving them opportunity to work. So what's your view on that? So I, uh, somewhere the main, so, uh, see, logistics is a thankless industry, first of all, right? If anything, everything is going right, no one cares. If anything goes south, that is when everyone notices, right? And Over the last three decades or four decades, logistics had been branded as something which was bad in nature. You know, you have to talk to drivers, you have to manage this. And because of that reason, all those established players that we talk about who who are still doing wonders and were doing wonders five or ten years back, no second generation wants to join in because of that image around it. So a lot of that second generation of established business units are not joining in the business. But at the same time, the logistics pie is increasing day by day. And that's where I see a lot of these new age entrepreneurs or I call them logipreneurs who are ideally coming in, right? Who are coming in to solve this problem that was, okay, I, I am willing to take this into account. So there are, there is FR8, there is Raho, right? There is Lob Logistics who, are, who have come into play and are organizing the broker module also. And all this is happening because they're willing to give that data transparency to the client and being upfront with any issue that is coming in. So now what is happening is there is a gap in the industry. So all manufacturers want an educated transporter they can deal with, who can reply to mails, communications, give MIS. On the transporter side, there is a huge gap between those who can service it. So there is a transporter who is educated and there are those who are not. And this gap is wide. And now the demand for an educated logistics partner is increasing drastically. And that's where you see, you know, that's where you see where a lot of logistics, a lot of manufacturers go and say to small companies who they find they are educated that we will help you grow. We want to support you. 
you grow because not now 5 years 4 years 10 years down the line you will help us right so that's where the transition is happening that in the logistics there is a huge demand that are that is up for grabs for people who are organizing the space in small way by doing minor minor steps and don't want to stick to the traditional way a uh, way of working so nice. that's the reason you will see every city now every major metro state metro i will not say they are startups right so majority so because a lot of lingo around startups goes around funding whether the bottom line is profitable or not what i'm talking about is hardcore businessmen who are coming here for profit who are able to provide the technology solution and build over it mm-hmm. so so i i personally feel that once we enter 2030 you will see those 100 names on board in indian logistics space which you would have never heard of yeah definitely i also believe this so you mentioned one you know very correct line that educated people education that that does not mean academic education education means how things can be done in a proper manner is very less in logistics you know when i go out and pitch about the solution which can be you know given to clients people are amazed to see that this kind of solution can be available in market right so if i talk about seamless checking or something else there are so many companies logistics companies they don't even know that this can be done through softwares and this is this is a big problem for indian logistics uh, absolutely okay but yeah yeah so uh, i'll also like to know about the adoption of logistics uh, you know way of doing e-commerce right so all those logistics companies who are you know uh, related to e-commerce this e-commerce logistics is totally a different ball game right you have to deal differently you have a last mile you have middle mile you have to you know take care of things which which is again coming return all these things so how you are dealing that what's your thought on that so i i'll talk more from mid mile perspective because that's what i do right uh, so Uh, if i go back to say 2018 when well, that is when we i personally first started de- dealing with appointment based delivery right so uh, hear me out so when my client asked me that you know boss i want to dispatch a truck from delhi on monday and i want a delivery on friday 8 am in bangalore my response was okay sir friday 8 am nahi to 8 pm pahunch jayega theek hai matlab koi stress nahi he is like by 8 am i mean 8 am it cannot be 8:30 so that's when my response also to him was this is not possible you are doing business in india mm-hmm. this is not possible okay so uh, but then obviously we started so from 2017 where we used to tell our driver or our, our our transport support team or our service provider that i need appointment here and everyone used to back off fast track it to 2023 jan where we are sitting in 85% drivers when they come for loading they ask delivery kab deni what is the delivery appointment time Yeah. Wow. And this has been made possible for by Amazon and Flipkart. They have made Indian logistics system learn that boss, hey, we hold a huge pie of the business that you are doing in doing currently, right? And this is how it has to be done. So either you do it or you don't. But I am going to do business. So now is a time frame where I, but I, I would not be wrong in saying that eighty percent of driver know the value of appointment time. when i say him 8 am he knows it's 8 am he would not take it ki 8 am bola 2 pm ho gaya theek hai he knows it's 8 am right so there has been a transitional shift now and this has migrated to normal players also so we do lot of distribution for brands who are not selling e-commerce but have retail distribution they also give us appointments now they develop their internal appointments okay this is my appointment i need delivery on this date theek hai and then right. they uh, you know do our report card study by end of the month ki okay this were the givens this were reported on time this were off time blah 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 with penalty clauses so there has been a phenomenal shift where people and this is good the only bad part is the value of appointment so what happens many a times is you are given an appointment the vehicle reaches an appointment but is not offloaded for 5 days right so th- that's a big challenge uh, and i think a lot of uh, you know who's and who of logistics are uh, are currently highlighting this you know this has to reduce Right. so if from a logistics person you are expecting a delivery on time you have to adhere to it you have to have your own internal tech to offload it right all right but uh, but it has moved matlab it has moved very fast uh, matlab i myself wonder seeing now that you know where we were where we are and despite all the hiccups that indian logistics offer which is in terms of driver related issues or toll issues or whatever whatever issues are there right on and off there is some menace going on in india somewhere there is a 
when at kamaharashtra border issues sometimes as well west bengal border issues those thick ups happen still we are currently managing 98.82% on time deliveries so right. there has been that transition and i i think it's for good it's for good when the person loading it knows that i have to reach on this date it will get offloaded he can plan his return load also which increases his asset utilization that you know i know i have to go on bangalore this date i has to offload on this date hence i can book my return load on this date with a 100% commitment so that right. that shift is happening that and those people who are not going with it are saying no this is not going to happen this is not our industry and you will see their volumes will dwindle slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly so right. that has been the shift yeah and i i i am pretty sure once we talk about all these highways coming into place new corridors building in it's going to reduce substantially we we matlab the tat to howda or calcutta from delhi has reduced to 30 hours which used to be 60 65 hours at a time right so you know right now i was studying a, a a kind of you know report so across india entire tat is reduced to 3 days so whether doesn't matter where you are going we have good road and if you want you can deliver material in 3 days one more point you mentioned you know that the unloading detention which is very critical so most of the cases when we are you know dealing with flipkart it's if it's uh, you know uh, B to C, right? So we know that when my goods is coming, right, and I'll be available, or someone will be available to receive that. But in B to B, there's no uh, ATM mechanism for the unloading point, and this is the biggest challenge. This is what we have realized, and that's why we have also introduced some features in Traco that whenever any trip is going to reach, we can alert your endpoint person so they can be prepared for the unloading before reaching out the vehicle. So this can be done. You are young entrepreneur, right? You are doing things and. we hardly see young people in logistics so what was the challenging part for you to start a logistic company and run a logistic company so uh, for me it, st- uh, it started when i was in petlite when i was doing a job after my post graduation that was in 2013 i was in petlite i was post uh, posted out of sirakpur chandigarh and uh, i was handling punjab haryana himachal as a territory so that time i used to crib very very frequently to my national manager that you know boss because of mismanagement of warehouse and logistics team i lose 10% of my sale every month and he got tired of me after listening to me for 2 3 4 months that boss if you have so much problem go and sit in the bloody warehouse and solve the problem so that's when i went there and i realized ki boss there is no one knows nothing so there is a there is a truck which has got dispatched from the factory is supposed to come he has no communication he cannot plan his labor he has no idea when the vehicles are reaching he has no idea when the sales are going to happen there are no forecasts that are in place and that's when i realized ki this has to solve somewhere or the other and that's when my interest in logistics started so that's when i thought of ki ha i want to do logistics i want to start logistics and uh, that's how i started perfect so, so i i just wanted to you know ask last question that as we all are into logistic right and this entire industry is booming very fast everyone focusing government is you know taking uh, at taking steps to make sure that things are going perfect in this industry so what's your vision as per you how this indian logistic will look like after 5 years or 6 years see uh, i well it's very difficult for me to comment on uh, that question but uh, as far as i can say the major transition that's going to happen in 5 to 6 years is one uh, that concept of pilti book ki aap hath mein you are just scribbing off and writing it is going to go it has to go theek hai mm-hmm. so that is one second there you are going to see a massive shift happening in the pod collections currently everyone insists on hard copy you know that we need that stamp copy let it come to us and if if you sit across and ask them question there is no logic behind it they can take a picture of it and it's, it's more than okay or they can take a gps tracking and do an epod that's okay the only reason why a lot of people have been doing is is because it increases your payment time the person has to right. sources give it it will bill it to you so it increases your one so that, that's going to go because a lot of if if you talk about us any of our client says we want physical pod we say we don't want to do business that's okay so it has to do go away yeah, yeah. second i think the major sh- thing that will come is with m perumal being very very active uh, the data on the fleet that is running or the fleet that is coming on loading is it financially default or not that's a huge requirement in the industry and that data point they have started working on it i am pretty sure by 2024 or maybe this year also i don't i don't know they will open a platform where you can check whether 
how is the financial health of the vehicle that is coming to you right? right then with the companies like raho and everything they have a history you give them a truck number they will tell him they will tell you what is the average running per day for that particular vehicle right so all these data points are coming so 5 years down the line what i see is that you enter a vehicle number whether it's a factory whether it is the transporter whether it's any third party and you'll get all the data of it whether the insurance is due insurance is paid is there any financial default has there any been accident cases on this particular vehicle what is the average per kilometer running that this vehicle do because all new vehicles come with gps integration right right in built gps right. so you know how much it is running so i personally feel that's where the change will be that 5 years down the line people who have adapted technology at the same time who are learning every day as to what is coming in the market trying to see how they can improve their processes are going to survive are going to be there for a long run and that's the change i see ki it's going to be hardcore technology driven the transparency which we are looking at because currently when well, like 5 years down the line it was an opaque industry you don't know anything once your truck has left now it is semi translucent where you have some idea where it is where it is not how it will reach 5 years down the line you will know everything what is happening with your vehicle so that's what i feel is going to be the big change wow as this far as last... mid mile logistics is <laughs> yeah this is something interesting i never thought of this no so right now track have integration with amp parivahan where you can see uh, rc is valid or not insurance is valid or not right and this concept this you mentioned very correctly you know people can also see in future that what is the default is is, is this vehicle is in default list or not what is the average kilometer because of all vehicle coming with gpss and this is something great we will also work on this if we can find out we will definitely yeah, try to in real this I, I, <laughs> it would do wonders i i'm pretty sure it would do wonders with the kind of modules yeah. you are bringing in see uh, see saas there are a lot of companies doing saas right but whenever so i i will tell you pre covid we worked with a lot of companies try to you know meet a lot of companies understand so i say for example traco comes to me and i love the product yeah it's good then he says okay the first time installation cost is 2.5 lakh rupees and then this 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 that's the moment i say okay let me think about it whether it adds value to me or not i don't know i have to be 100% sure before paying you 2.5 lakh rupees and that's one time setup cost right? mm-hmm. now we are at a place where people are saying okay ab try karo It's six rupees an inlet, ten rupees an inlet, forty rupees an inlet. That's nothing, right? And if it works for me, it works for me. And we have right. been adopting all these companies where in different different processes of our organization, you know. And I think this is what is gonna bring in or faster the change that we are talking about. Right. Because the price right. of adop price of adoption and learning of technology in my business has reduced substantially for me. right right true true so you know just just i wanted to close this entire conversation with one line so earlier what was happening if if i sum in into a uh, layman languages so logistic ke har ek vehicle pe there is a hardly 1000 2000 ka margin for transporter right maybe 5000 is max to max you'll get in one vehicle so giving add on services within this limit if any add on services which you are giving at increasing that value by 100 rupees is costly for transporters so this is what we are also thinking and that's why we are trying to reduce costing for the softwares and valuation for you know the whatever service we are giving to other clients and everyone okay. so see i i still have an option to choose right if i have 10 yeah. shipments going in i can choose to use tracking only on three of them and seven i know i don't need right so that 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 helps me in reducing my average per transaction cost still further right right yeah thank you thank you so much sir for joining it was great talking to you any anything you wanted to add for closing line no pratik it was just wonderful and uh, keep on doing the good work i keep on following you on linkedin whatever the posts you do and uh, some of them actually are uh, eye opener for us also okay okay yeah all right so this 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 is coming in like i told you right i just saw about your last mile thing and i was like okay so that, that's where the penetration is happening right that's that's where the adoption has also started right mid mile is still a high ticket game right but when you talk about last mile it's a small ticket game and that's also where people are started focusing on so it's wonderful it was right, actually amazing right. uh, interacting with you thank you so much sir thank you for your time have a great day ahead all right pradeep take care bye bye